Welcome back everybody, my name is Nick930 and this is a video review for the console version of Destiny 2. Destiny originally launched on the PlayStation and Xbox platform way back in 2014 and was met with mixed reactions from the gaming community. While it sold incredibly well and garnered a massive audience, many criticized the game for being misleading in terms of advertisements, offering less of an open world and more of a repetitive loot-fetching linear shooter. And it's important to know that Destiny 2 doesn't try to change that formula. Destiny 2 is very much more of Destiny 1. So if you seriously hated Destiny 1, that it would be reasonable for you to dismiss the sequel. I for one enjoyed Destiny 1 when I first played through the game's main missions and cooperative content. But what killed the experience for me was the end game and how much of the game focused on repeatedly playing the same content just to unlock a slightly better weapon. So after eventually giving up on the original game, the franchise name left something of a bad taste in my mouth. That's why I was surprised that I actually enjoyed my playthrough of Destiny 2 significantly more. While the core gameplay still remains the same, it seems Bungie went through and addressed many of the gripes that I had with the original game. The game consists of an actual story this time around, and is much more interesting than whatever the hell we were doing in that first game. Gameplay mechanics are introduced at a much more reasonable pace, and this sequel does a fantastic job of easing new players and returning players back into the Destiny mindset. In fact, the strike missions, something I remember all too well from the first game, aren't introduced to the player until I was very close to the final mission. The game features a ton of new weapons, and throughout my pl time playing I felt like I rarely received the same weapon but with different stats. Every new weapon I acquired took a little bit getting used to and forced me to adjust my approach to combat, which made for a great experience. The game's level design is much better this time around, but the various moons and planets you visit have some great variety in a franchise that previously felt incredibly dull. The multiplayer remains the same as it did in the original game, and I still have some issues with it, but I feel more compelled to give it a chance this time around. So let's start this review by talking about the game's story. The original Destiny had an interesting premise. You play as a Guardian, one of the many soldiers tasked with defending the neighboring plants in the solar system from evil, while taking advantage of this gigantic sphere called the Traveler that grants the Guardian's power. Bungie made sure to fix one of the biggest issues with the last game and introduces an actual cast of characters this time around. We have Commander Savala, an overly loyal and pure guardian that always puts the safety of everyone above everything else. Then we have Akora, a warlock that seems to be wiser and smarter than the other characters. And then the comic relief Cade, a robotic hunter that always has something cocky or funny to say. The characters come off as very cookie cutter, but have some personality, and it's definitely a massive improvement over the desolate wasteland of story that was Destiny 1. The main protagonist that the player controls is still silent and the little floating ghost robot generally does all the talking for him throughout the campaign. Unlike the first game, Destiny 2 introduces an actual threat. A cabal army called the Red Legion attack Earth in a massive hostile takeover and capture the Traveler, removing the magic power from all the Guardians called Light. Gaul, the leader of the Red Legion, shows up early on in the story and establishes himself as someone you don't want to mess with as he takes away all your power and abilities, which is a convenient way of forcing veteran players to rank up from zero again, and then kicks you off of a ship hundreds of feet in the air. Gaul is a great villain, and there's a few cutscenes that establish a deeper conflict and give us a much more interesting villain. Unfortunately, this is never fully explored, and we're left with the makings of a great villain that never reaches his full potential. Now, I don't want to spoil any of the story, so I'll avoid explaining what happens after the initial meet and greet with Gaul, but it's safe to assume that you'll complete a bunch of missions and regroup with all the main characters in order to fight back against the bad guys. The main storyline will take you about 8 to 9 hours to complete, and that's including the occasional side mission, public event, and competitive multiplayer. Now, I included that in my average because you won't be able to play through the campaign missions and ignore the rest of the content. The game's missions require you to be a certain level in order to activate them and playing straight through the campaign missions won't be enough to rank up. The story's ending was satisfying and does a great job setting up the end game content, which is obviously a major part of this type of game, and you can always replay missions if you'd like. So overall, the story is a major improvement over the last game, but the missions aren't going to be anything revolutionary, and the cutscenes just feel like bookmarks to hold it all together. I found it a little odd that throughout most of the game, Gaul, the supreme overlord capable of destroying planets, didn't seem to notice that I was messing up all his well thought out plans, so there was a real sense of disconnect throughout the campaign. There was a couple of other major plot holes throughout, but like I said, it's a big improvement from before, and I can accept that, because what really matters here is the gameplay. Now like I said before, Destiny 2 is very much still Destiny. The shooting, the movement, the controls, and the basic mechanics are all identical to how they worked before. There's only very slight adjustments to how things work. For example, shaders, the consumable used to change the color of your armor, is now limited, forcing players to now spend more on shaders than they would have 
and save rare shaders on only their best armor. Destiny 2 also introduces a few new things like a massive arsenal of new weapons that all feel unique and have great designs. I rarely received the same gun from loot drops and found myself consistently experimenting with new weapon types throughout my playthrough. Loot drops are just as rare as before and most of the time the loot I picked up was an improvement over what I already had, which gave me a real sense of progression. The difficulty and ranking system scaled very nicely and while I died only a few times throughout my playthrough, I always felt as though I was being challenged and never felt like engagements were too easy. The few times I did die however were often from awkward jumps in unclear directions. Each of the three classes you can choose from have different styles of jetpack movement, and you can change these styles within each class for different situations. For example, the Titan class I used has a long burst jetpack that can be used to clear long distances or propel upwards several feet. But now and again I felt like I used the jetpacks a little too early or too late, and it resulted in an instant death. That was really frustrating, especially when it forced me to restart long firefights from the beginning. The various other powers can be unlocked using skill points acquired throughout the leveling up system, and you can unlock different types of grenades and abilities like this cool shield that will automatically take cover for you when you're not aiming, and will reload your gun instantly every time you duck down. The firearms all have a great sense of weight and impact when firing, and punching an enemy in the face was always satisfying and a great way to finish off enemies if you're stuck reloading. I did feel as though the grenades were unsatisfying, and I never felt like they had the explosive punch that I would have expected, no matter which grenade type I chose to use. Occasionally you could take control of vehicles, but aside from some scripted scenes throughout the campaign where you take control of a construction vehicle or a tank, most of the vehicles remain exactly the same as the original game. I didn't even gain access to my Sparrow speed bike until I finished the campaign, which was kind of annoying considering that there were a few instances where I just had to walk across really long roads with no way to move faster. Just like in Destiny 1, the level design in Destiny 2 is split up by worlds. Each world features a larger open world section, often populated by random friendly online players. You can work alongside these players and fight random enemies that constantly drop down from dropships around the world, but I did feel as though the dropship rate was a bit too frequent. The starting location for the very first planet is right next to one of these dropship areas, and it felt overwhelming every time I tried to visit this, with enemies constantly shooting at me like crazy and never letting up. There's also big public events that are constantly popping up around each world that reward players that participate with valuable loot and resources. I participated in several of these and it was a great way to work alongside random players online with minimal communication. I tried tackling one of these alone and it got completely destroyed by enemies that were too high of a rank for me. In addition to these events you can also participate in adventures which are really just side quests that have you revisiting areas from the main campaign missions and fighting different swarms of enemies. Later in the game you'll also be introduced to patrol missions which felt really similar to the adventures and I can't quite figure out why they're called something different. Completing these tasks will reward you with tokens for a vendor that lives on that specific world, and trading them in will grant you access to special rewards, which encourages players to really spend some time exploring each world and completing activities with random guardians. Then there's the strike missions, which aren't introduced until much later in the game's story. Strike missions are very large cooperative missions that feature some difficult combat, and even more difficult bosses. The loot for these missions is often very valuable, and playing through them with your friends is probably the most exciting part of the game's co-op content. If the first Destiny is anything to go off of, the strike missions will offer special rewards every week if you complete them on the harder difficulties, and they'll cycle through different strike missions each week to help mix it up. This doesn't appear to have changed much at all, and there's not really much else to say about them. I tried joining one of these strike playlists, and it dropped me in the middle of a random strike towards the end with random players. And while I was underleveled compared to them, I still felt like I was making a difference and I enjoyed myself. I just wish the matchmaking had found me a fresh match so I didn't miss out on the story content. And finally we have the Crucible. Now the Crucible has received a few tweaks in Destiny 2 and the player count has been reduced down to smaller matches of 4v4. This seems to work well for Destiny though, and I felt like it was easier to understand what was happening in each match. It's still very unclear how the player rankings, weapons, gear level, and various other stats play into the multiplayer, and how it's all balanced out, but I never felt like my weapons were too weak to kill enemies. I also found that sticking around other teammates seemed to work really well, and the game rewards you with kills even if you only got assists, which is a nice touch to combat people stealing your kills. The game's tick rate is still remarkably low, and I often would run into instances where I was being shot around a corner, or I would kill trade even with melee kills so it's not the best competitive shooter experience. But it is a fun break from the game's missions and I enjoyed the few rounds that I played. Now let's take a moment to talk about the game's performance and visual quality. 
Destiny 2 runs fantastic on the PS4 Pro with a locked 30 frames per second and little to no drop in frame rates throughout my 9 hour playthrough, even during the most intense firefights. The game's visuals look pretty much exactly the same as Destiny 1, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Water effects look great and the newer level designs are really impressive. Colors are more vibrant this time around and the variety in the worlds is a welcome change from the boring blue and brown color palette from the last game. I've tried the game on PC with the beta and was impressed with the game's smooth 100 plus frame rate, but despite the weaker hardware, the PS4 Pro does an excellent job maintaining a smooth frame rate while outputting some really impressive visuals. So in short, Destiny 2 is without a doubt a sequel to Destiny 1. It has the same graphics, the same gameplay, the same basic premise, but the significant improvement to the game's story, the larger variety in weapon types, a few tweaks to enemies like the new weaknesses for the shield enemies all help to make a more refined experience that I found myself enjoying much more than the original game. The content is presented in a much more manageable way, with game modes being explained much more clearly and never overwhelming the player. The end game content is readily available this time around and makes more sense than it did before, which should help to keep the community happy. It's obvious that future content is planned for Destiny 2 by means of paid downloadable content. But if the downloadable content for the past title is anything to go off of, it'll likely be worth it. Destiny 2 is a great sequel to one of the more successful new IPs in gaming. It gives returning players more of what they love, while also doing a great job of introducing new players to all of the content it has to offer, without making them feel out of the loop. It's available right now for PS4 and Xbox One for $60, and will be available in a little over a month for the PC platform. If you enjoyed the first game, definitely pick this one up. And if you were disappointed with the first game, it's possible you might enjoy the sequel enough to come back. I hope this review was helpful, and if you want to see more content like this, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more reviews posted every week.